I'm starting a small group next week on Monday nights. It's only going to be six weeks till the end of April uh, at and, mom's house. And why is it only six weeks? Oh, because I won't be here in May. So eight weeks is now six weeks because we're running out of time. I got a job, so I'm, I'm, I'm leaving. Um, Who can come? Anyone, anyone can come. Everyone's welcome. And where will it be? Mom's house. That's me <laughs> at Riverman Acres. If you don't know where I live, yeah, you can that, ask me. it's just that way. Um, yeah, you go down to the Water Tower Road, take a right, silos on your right. That's and it. Starting tomorrow night? Nope, next Monday. A week Monday? Yep. And what time? Good question. Seven o'clock? Seven o'clock sounds like a good one. Hi. And if they would like to join, should they see you after yeah, service? Yeah, come talk to me. Or send me an email? Yep. Good job. Uh, Ephesians. Ephesians. Yep, that, yep, Ephesians. So, yeah, there you go. <laughs> and so the small groups that have been going will be finishing up now. And then we'll be looking at starting a new uh, session of them. So April to June is kind of our ballpark time. So end um, before summer. And so if you would like either to host one, as in provide the location, or you would like to lead one, let me know. The small groups are huddle style. So Ephesians is what we'll be going through. And uh, you just basically get the first section, the first chapter, and then you look at it. And for those of you who have been in a huddle, you know what I'm talking about. And so if you would like to lead, please come and see me and I will find a location and, and let me know what days or times that you would uh, like to do that. And we'll be having a testimony this morning about um, one of the huddles and the small groups and how that went. Um, two more announcements I have for you. There is a marriage retreat happening in St. Catharines at Pastor Andrew Mills Church on April 21st and 22nd. This is a Friday night and then a Saturday. And so if you would like uh, to go, let me know. I had a flyer that I thought I printed off to the side, but obviously that's empty, so I forgot. But um, come and see me, and I will get you connected with that. Also, in two weeks after service, we are going to have our annual general meeting, which you shouldn't miss because it is really fun and short. <laughs> Next on my list, I would like to invite Leanne up. Um, as I said, we've been having small groups, and uh, there have been about three different groups that have been happening from January to now. And so I asked Leanne if she would come and just share a little bit about the group, uh, a testimony, a praise yeah. for the Lord, whatever for Leanne sure. wants. Can I, can I hug you? I haven't seen you since you came home. <laughs> so I love hugs. <laughs> Um, so good morning, I'm Leanne, for those of you that uh, don't know who I am. And uh, we've had a ladies small group huddle. Uh, we started in January, we're just finishing up and plan on starting again in April. Um, and I just wanted to share with you um, how special this has really been. Um, this group of ladies is from literally the age 20s to 60s and it's, been such a journey that we've been able to share um, our stories together. So um, when I found out I was going to share a little testimony, I was asking the Lord, um, what do you want me to share? Because I want to share, you know, whatever you want to share. And um, he gave me this picture of all of us standing together, almost linking arms. And so we have this chat going on, which is fantastic with the uh, us group. And I put in the chat, I kind of had this picture that we would all stand up here together. And then literally this morning, um, there was a message from one of the ladies in the group requesting um, a fairly urgent prayer. And um, I just had that picture again. And here we are all in the chat, praying in the chat, literally standing together. And um, as we go through this journey together, I just see us all getting very strong and um, getting very courageous and getting very brave for the Lord, and we're doing it together. And the reality is, is that 
we walk through life and sometimes we think, oh, I shouldn't ask for prayer for that. It's not really a big deal or it's silly or, you know, it's only me that's going through this or nobody's gone through that before. And the reality is, is that we are very much the same and we actually have a lot of the same dreams. We have a lot of the same battle scars. And um, as we walk together and we get close together and we learn to pray together and we learn to hear God together, we get strong. And that's what I'm seeing happening um, with this group. So if you want to join, please join. You have nothing to lose and you have everything to gain. Um, and it's a great way to just connect and get community. So it's And wonderful. what days do you meet? We meet on Thursdays. And we aim for uh, to start at seven, um, but we like to have tea and stuff. So we chat and, mm -hmm. and we have a great time. And whose house do you meet at? We meet at Julie's and I think that's going to continue, but I haven't really had that conversation, but I'm sure she'll be up for it. So. Yes, it is. So before the kids go downstairs, I would like you kids to help pray this morning because the person who asked for prayer is Julie and they are in Panama and kids, um, Kevin, Julie's husband, has a piece of steak. This seems like a strange prayer request, but stuck in his esophagus. So he can breathe, but he can't swallow, eat more food and water. And so there in Panama, they had messaged this in the middle of the night, and as of this morning, um, it's still not dislodged. And so I would like all the kids and all the moms and dads to join us together and pray for Kevin and for this to become dislodged because they've gone to a medical hospital this morning, but it's just sort of like a walk-in clinic, right? So previously this has happened to Kevin, he had to have a scope. Um, so we don't know if that's possible, but we know a God who with everything's possible. So let's join together and, and pray. Lord, we uphold our brother Kev to you and um, Julie, who is with them, and the kids who are still back at the resort. And we ask that you would intervene. I pray, Lord, that you would surround the kids at the resort with peace as they don't know what's happening with dad. Mm -hmm. And I pray, Lord, that in the name of Jesus, you would just dislodge this piece of steak, that he would breathe, that he would be able to swallow. Mm -hmm. um, and God, whether it's through a human intervention or just by you divinely um, disrupting this. We pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. It's so good to be a family and to have kids involved. And um, so thank you. Thanks to the, not kids, youth at the back who also do the AV. Um, really appreciate everyone. So we're starting a new series today on new life. And you might think it a little odd then. We've read from Genesis and um, about the creation of the world. And I'd like us just to, to focus on that because if we want to talk about the new life, we can first just think back to the old life. Um, we heard about how sin and death entered into the world. Uh, and we may forget, but the world that we experience right now isn't the way that God designed it to be. When people often ask me, why is there evil and suffering in the world if God is good? And I often say, because when God made it, it was good. It was better than good. It was perfect. And God gave us a choice. And sadly, we chose this. If we love, we choose, right? If we didn't choose, then how could we call it love? And so we made a choice, Adam and Eve made a choice up to that point to love God and to eat of the tree of life and not of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil up until the moment that they didn't. And then that day together, they chose to have the knowledge of evil and their eyes were opened and they saw it. Sin entered into their heart and they became separated from God. And how do we know? because their first action was to hide, to separate from God, and they experienced shame for the very first time. Shame always initiates separation, and it always causes us to hide. But because of God's great mercy and kindness, he put angels in front of the tree of life, that last verse that Eli read, to guard the tree. 
Um, and you see, then we weren't allowed to live in this sinful state forever. Death became an end and became a gift. So God didn't create humanity to die. But once we brought evil in, then he said to Adam, from dust you are and now to dust you'll return. So if I was God, I might have paraphrased it a little differently and I might have said something like, Listen, Adam, that was a really bad decision you made back there. Uh, I gave you dominion over this earth. You were to fill it, subdue it, rule it. And the key to your dominion was because I, God, gave it to you. The key to your dominion was not eating of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. But you did. And so what you don't truly realize that when you ate it, you opened the door and you allowed evil in. You actually gave up your dominion and handed it to the devil. Do you see that? He now has dominion over the earth. That was a really bad choice. But hey, what's done is done, and I'm going to put my biggest angels in front of the tree of life to not allow you to eat it. Because trust me, you are not going to like the changes that you've made around here. It's going to get dark real fast. I've seen this guy, Satan. I've seen his heart. It's pure hatred. So when I block you from the tree of life, you're going to be limited in time. If I was fully in justice, I would let you live forever with the consequences of your choice. But because I'm fully in mercy, I'm going to give you a second chance, an opportunity to choose again. But wait for it. A day's like a thousand years to me. But I'll take care of it because I love you. I might have said something like that, a bit wordier. And so God's one and only begotten son, Jesus, came to the earth as a human to right this wrong. Humans gave the dominion of the earth to Satan. And so a human, Jesus, the son of man, would win it back. Evil entered, and so Jesus had to be perfectly sinless. And he was. On behalf of us, once for all, he defeated the king of this world, the devil, the one whom we, as humans, handed over the keys of this kingdom. And then on the third day, God raised him from the dead. So once death and evil have been defeated, forever is restored. For everyone, does everyone go there? Again, God in his love gives us a choice, because to love is a choice. So it is offered to everyone. Jesus offers his death as payment for sin for the world. And we can choose it if we like. So this is where we stand. In history, this is where we stand in our story. And right now we're in a season called Lent. It's 40 days before Easter, excluding Sundays, and it's leading up to a great event we called Easter, right? Easter's the celebration of this new life in Jesus, this new life that I want to focus on for the next uh, month or so. A new life we're going to have eternally without the influence of evil. And how do we get it? We choose. We choose to accept Jesus. The season of Easter at Christian for Christians reminds us of the choice that we've already made. And if you aren't a Christian, I want to remind you that it is a choice you can make just like that. You can accept Jesus and what he did and celebrate Easter as for the resurrection and the new life that it brings for you as well. So in our Canadian culture, Easter is often represented with Easter eggs, right? Everyone have Easter eggs? Okay, anyone not have Easter eggs in your upbringing? Carl. I'm sorry, Carl. 
The Easter egg hunt in our house is very elaborate. Frank's dad started it while he was alive, and you were given a clue, and you had to figure it out, which led to the next clue, which had a little Easter egg, and another clue, until on and on and on, and running all over the farm, there was a grand finale of more Easter eggs than you could ever need to eat in your life. And Easter eggs are such a great representation in Christianity, because it talks about the new life in the egg, and the Easter egg hunt represents the great mysteries that are hidden for us that we need to hunt for. Hidden in scripture, God has hidden his word in our heart, and he has hidden even the essence of creation all around. His essence in creation. It's hidden there if only we'll look, and if only we will hunt for it. So as Christians, we hunt. We hunt for new life, We hunt for the mystery of the gospel, and we share it. When we find that egg, that joy, we can't keep it quiet. In uh, Matthew 11, 25, it says, I I think I have a new slide there. At that time, Jesus prayed this prayer. O Father, Lord of heaven and earth, thank you for hiding these things from those who think themselves wise and clever and for revealing them to the childlike. We don't need a Bible college degree to read the Bible. We don't need a big explanation to read the Bible. We just need to read it. And we just need an easy translation, unless you like Shakespeare's and these and thou's, and one that speaks in the same language that you speak. So if you're Michelle, you maybe read it in Dutch or something, but English Bibles are what we have here, and my favorite thing is to give Bibles away. And so if you don't have a Bible, or you have one, someone, once I met a lady who said, Libby, I just can't read the Bible. I'm so embarrassed, I just need to read it with you, because I just don't understand it. And when she brought her Bible, I realized she was reading in the Old King James Version. And she didn't know there was all different kinds. And so I have Bibles up here from kids, Bernstein Bears, Adventure Bibles, right through to giant print Bibles, for those of you who want bigger letters. So at any stage in your life, there is a Bible that's easy to read and to understand, and you can hunt for this mystery in Scripture, this joy. The other thing about our search with God is he promises that you'll find him. So in our next slide, it tells us a scripture from Jeremiah 29, 13. You will seek me and you will find me because you seek me with all your heart. This isn't a treasure hunt that's too hard, right? You will find him. It's not too hard to find God in the scriptures. He's right there waiting. So things that you find in a treasure hunt, in any kind of scavenger hunt, are more sweet because you had to hunt for them. It's more exciting to hunt for something and find it than to just be given it to you on a platter. And so that's why God has hidden this for you. He hasn't hidden it from you. So we use the analogy of Easter eggs, but God has used so many different analogies in Scripture. Um, these are analogies that take us with the example from death to life, from human birth to spiritual rebirth. Born into a kingdom that has death and consequences of sickness, pain, separation, abuse, these are all consequences of that choice to have the knowledge of evil. We are now very, very aware of the difference between good and evil. We just need to go outside and look throughout our day. We can also see it if we look inside, into our heart. Selfishness, pride, deceit, we're all born into sin. And so now we're on a treasure hunt for joy that lasts a lifetime. So like I said, we have Easter eggs. But I want to remind you of some analogies that God gave us in Scripture. These show the death to life. These show the hunt. And see if you can find the treasure in this. 
Noah. God flooded the entire earth. Moses and his family are saved by the grace of God. God gave them plans for the ark, the timing of the salvation, how to measure it. He calls the animals, and they're saved. Death to life. Jonah, he's disobedient, and his disobedience causes a storm. We can all relate to that part. He tries to run from God. He can't. We can all relate to that part. And Jonah's thrown overboard and swallowed by the grace of God. Because I'm betting he couldn't swim. So he would have died. But three days later, he is spat out. Three days. Death to life. Any treasure in that one? And lastly, baptism. Immersion baptism reminds us of these Old Testament scriptures. It reminds us of Noah. It reminds us of Jonah. These being saved through the water. And they point us to the symbolism of Jesus' death and resurrection. The going down in the water symbolizing Jesus' death. And the coming up symbolizing his resurrection. And when we choose baptism, we choose choose Jesus' death for us. We accept that on his behalf. And in Romans 6, 4, it says, we are therefore buried with him through baptism into death in order that just as Christ was raised, we too may live a new life, not by our own merits, but by the grace of God. So we're focusing next month on this topic, on creation, on new creation, on death to life and how that affects us personally. I was born in Australia, and when I came to Canada, I was very perplexed why Canadians talk in seasons. You know, next summer, last winter, and I thought, why don't they just say next August, last July? It didn't make any sense to me until I'd been through a cycle of seasons, right? And realize that you have such an example in Canada of death to life. Because in the state I grew up in, in Australia, the only difference from winter to summer might be the amount of Canadians swimming in the water, right? Because in winter, they're there. And in summer, they're all hiding to find air conditioning. But other than that, the leaves look the same. There's no snow. It's just pretty much the same all the time. And in Canada, there is a huge difference. What a season change we're entering for new life right now. We have no excuse in Canada to not recognize this. This is the treasure hunt that God has taken us on. If we'll look, if we'll hunt, and if we'll see it. So for those of you who still aren't getting this analogy, let me spell it out for you. Fall is like Jesus' death. The leaves dry up, they fall to the ground, they go into the ground. There's a season of death. There's a season of fasting. Nothing grows. It's dark. It represents death so well because it's so dark and the the days are so short. But along comes spring and life emerges. Flowers just burst forth. And every time I say to the flower, how do you know? How do you know it's time to come up? But they know all of creation speaks of the glory of God so that we are without excuse. Romans 1. They know the truth about God because it has, he has made it obvious to them. For ever since the world was created, people have seen the earth and sky. Through everything God made, they can clearly see his invisible qualities, his eternal power, his divine nature, So they have no excuse for not knowing God. Canadians, we have no excuse. Life is bursting forth right before our eyes. Psalm 19 says, The heavens proclaim the glory of God. Their message has gone throughout the the earth. Their words to all the world. Creation doesn't need a language. It doesn't need words. It just speaks. 
to everyone if we will hunt and see it. So right now, we live in a world where God's creation speaks a new life, a message of new life throughout the whole world. But you have to notice it. You have to be hunting to see it. So when you see the sun bursting through the clouds as you're driving, pause. There's God. Be still and know that he is God. But this is not the end. This is not the best that we've got. What we experience now as believers is the worst that we've got. Because in Isaiah 65, 17, it says, See, I will create new heavens and a new earth. The former things will not be remembered, nor will they come to mind. But be glad and rejoice forever in what I will create. Also in Revelation 21, 3. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Look, God's dwelling place is now among the people and he will dwell with them. They will be his people and God himself will be with them and be their God. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death or mourning or crying or pain for the old order of things has passed away. He who is seated on the throne said, I am making everything new. Then he said, write this down. For these words are trust, trustworthy and true. It's exciting. The new, the new life that is coming. And then the grand finale of it all is in Revelation twenty two fourteen. 14. Happy are those who wash their robes clean and have the right to eat the fruit from the tree of life and go through the gates to the city. There's this tree of life again that has been guarded from us. We get to eat of the fruit of the tree of life again. How are our robes made clean? By the blood of Jesus. Jesus by accepting what Jesus did for us on the cross at Easter, what we're looking forward to, by asking forgiveness for our sins, by being made spiritually new. So every spring, Canada bursts forth new, and we are ready to see it. Every spring, creation declares his glory, his new creation, the hope of the future, and this new points to the new that God has created for us, which we can experience on the other side of winter or death. It's there for us. In the dark of winter, when the sun comes up after we wake and it goes down before we get home from work, we can be encouraged to know this is just for a season. Spring is coming. I know that the shortest day of the year is December 22nd. And then we have Christmas, which is exciting. And then it just gets longer. And that's what I focus on all winter long. The days are getting longer. The days are getting longer. There's more light. It's that hope of new life coming. It's that joy. It's the same way as Christians. The same encouragement goes with us as believers. It goes through life. This darkness and this evil that we experience is just for a season. Spring is coming. Isaiah 43, 16. This is what the Lord says. Which Lord? He who made the way through the sea, a path through the mighty waters, who drew out the chariots and horses, the army and reinforcements together, and they laid there never to rise again, extinguished, snuffed out like a wick. Forget the former things. Don't dwell on the past. See, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Don't you perceive it? I am making a way in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland. Now it springs up. Don't you perceive it? I want us to perceive what God is doing. Outside in creation, it's getting warmer and flowers are coming. But also 
inside in our hearts during this Easter season. It's a season from death to life if we choose it. And our church, church as a whole, has been going through a season of death. We had COVID years where we weren't allowed to meet together. It was dark. But God is up to something new. And as a pastor, I get to hear all those amazing stories from you. I know in this church family that God is up to something new because I get to hear it. And so I want you to get to hear it as well because it is so encouraging. God is bursting forth new life in our congregation, in our lives, in our marriages, and even in our town. Every year with creation, it's different. The flowers are different, different ones bud in different spots because they've doubled or something underneath. It's always different. It's always exciting. And it's the same with God. It's an Easter egg hunt, and you need to look and find it. So today, I want to make a commitment with you. I want us to commit to participating in God's hunt. The hunt to see new life. The hunt to notice what's springing forth. And I want to commit to allowing the things in my life that need to fall and die in order for the new life to spring up. Death to life. We need to let go of some things so that the new can burst forth. Like life abundant, full, full of joy, full of fruit. As spring comes, then comes summer and the trees are filled with fruit and we're known by our fruit. So let's focus on the buds coming forth. Let's focus on spring. And to help re remember this commitment, I'd like to have a fun hunt for us. Each spring in my house, I had told my boys, the first one to find a flower wins. Because I thought it's fun. And often the flowers come on the side of the house and I don't always see them, but they go hunt for the flowers. And one year, one of my sons found the first flower and he wanted to win as they do. And so he pulled this flower off from right under the bud and brought it to me. Look, I found the first flower. And I was like, ah, oh, and you killed the first flower. So I want us to hunt. Nobody needs to pull flowers off and bring them to me, but I'd like you to send me a photo of the first flower. In your house that you find, send me your pictures and I would like to post them then on our social media. I have, I think, one more slide there, boys. And in that, we can hashtag, because that's the cool thing to do, Plattsville Church, and we can hashtag Isaiah 4319, talking about springing forth. But what I would like you to do is also send me your spiritual springing forth stories. I'd like you to share them in the service. What is God doing amongst us? What new life is springing forth? Oh, and could you come and teach my boys how to clean up? So I would like you to share with me the new life that God has been emerging in your life. Not just the flowers, but inside. And like Leanne shared, you too can share. If you don't want to share on stage, because apparently public speaking is the biggest fear in the world, then you can just email it to me and I can read it or somebody else can read it. But we need to share this joy, share what we've found. Just like on an Easter egg hunt, when you find something, it's, you hold it high, proud to share. So we have an amazing um, month up to Easter coming up. And next week, Creation Ministries is going to come. And if you have any questions about creation, any questions about earth, your most difficult question, come and bring it with you. And after service, the Creation Ministry guy is going to come to our house, and I invite you to pizza with the pastor. 
Frank has an amazing wood-fired pizza oven, and so he's going to fire it up for us, and you can bring your pizza topping and come to our house after church and chat with Richard, this guy from Creation Ministries, and ask him all your questions. And then on Monday night, he's going to come back, and we invite the whole town to come and hear, and he's going to speak to them. So be a part of that. The next Sunday after that, we are going to bless the Clayton family. They are heading on a new life journey, and we would love to bless them as they go. So if you have a story, something, some example of a way that Tim, Steph, or the girls brought some hope, new life into your, into your story, share it with me so that we can bless them as well as they head off into their new life journey. And then comes Palm Sunday. We have Good Friday, uh, 10 o'clock in the morning of service. We're going to have kids involved in that. And then Easter Sunday is going to be a potluck breakfast, an Easter egg hunt for kids, and then a real celebration service. But that is not the end because the best service will come the Sunday after that. And that's the service I want to invite you to think about participating in, which will be Baptism Sunday. I'd like to have a Sunday where anyone can be baptized. In case you don't know, under the cross here is a tank, and we fill it with water, and dunks are possible. So think about it. Listen to the Lord. If your heart skips a beat, If you feel a little nervous, butterflies, oh no, then maybe that's him saying, this is for you. This is an opportunity. Like I said last week, we are not focusing on the not essentials, right? Remember we talked about unity and essentials, liberty and non-essentials, and love in everything. So you might be from a sprinkle and confirm faith, or you might be from an immersion, a dedication an immersion faith, and I want you to sit. I want to tell you that either of those is okay. For me, as you know, I grew up Anglican, so I got sprinkled and then confirmed my faith, and one day at a Pentecostal tent meeting popped up in our town, my parents were there, and I said to my dad, I'm going to get baptized. And he said, what for? You've already been baptized, and you already confirmed it. And I said, I don't know. I just feel like God was telling me to do this. And so I did. I was to find out years later, but that's another story, why God wanted me to do that. The point is, if you're wanting to be baptized, this tank is for you. If you've been a Christian your whole life and you just never got baptized, just because maybe it didn't come up, or maybe you missed the opportunity, or you were away, or whatever the reason is, this tank is for you. Okay, so... We're not saying that you haven't been a Christian up to now. We're just saying we're standing with Jesus, and what a better time to do it. What a better time to say, yes, Jesus, that death and that resurrection, I'm going to symbolize it in my life with baptism. So I want us to be on the hunt. Be on the hunt for flowers. Share them with me. Be on the hunt for the new that God's doing in your life, and share that and then consider baptism. As we sing our final song together, I would like to offer you the opportunity for prayer as always. It's it's not a big thing, we're all a family and we all need prayer all the time. If during this song you want prayer, you can just come up to the front. You can kneel, someone, one of the elders, someone will come and pray for you. Someone from our church family. You don't need to share with them all the problems. Maybe you don't even know what it is yourself. You just want a blessing, right? There's power in the family and power in being together. So as we sing this final song, either declare the Lord's new life, ask God what needs to die so that new life can form. But let's give it to Him. God, I just thank you for what you've done, for your death, for your resurrection. Thank you, God, that you took care of our bad choice to allow evil in. And thank you, God, for the new life eternally that you offer for us. And this morning as we stand and sing, Lord, we just declare that you are worthy. In Jesus' name, 
Amen. Before we end, I'd just like to pray again. I checked my phone and Julie has uh, sent a message saying that they're still waiting, that Kevin's had an IV with medication to relax him, but no progress. It's likely he will be transferred to another hospital, a waiting game. So let's pray again. God, I just pray this song, this scripture over Kevin and Julie in Panama, that your great faithfulness would be everything that they need, that your hand would provide for them. And in the name of Jesus, we just declare freedom to Kevin for breath, for life, for um, fully open. God, to make his body work as you designed it, for your glory. In Jesus' name. Amen.